Hello and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. Set 2 is coming out tomorrow, Woo! Last week we went over every 1 and 2 cost units for the early game, but it's time to talk about the units that will really make or break your comp. Today we'll go over all the rares to legendary units. Time to see what OP units Riot has in store for us. But before we begin, remember to click our link below in our description to see more in-depth guides, builds, and ways to win you your next games. There are many courses designed by pro players within the top 1% of the game to teach you the meta and how to effectively climb the ladder. So if you want to get to the top 4 of your games, then go to ProGuides.com today and we will see you there. Link will be included in the description below. Alright, without any further ado, let's begin with the 3 cost champions. Let's get the easier ones out of the way. First up is Aatrox, Vagar, and Kindred, our returning champions from set 1. Aatrox is still a Blade Master, but instead of being a mana destroying demon, he is now a light unit. His ability hasn't changed, being Arc Light Blade, where Aatrox slams his sword in a circle in front of him, damaging enemies' hit. Light comps are significantly powerful right now, where you can even try to force him every game. If he hits the units, you're almost guaranteed to win. We do expect a nerf on this when the set goes live, especially when the rank season starts again. As for Vagar, he is now a Shadow Mage. Shadows amplified his damage, while Mage allows him to double cast. This is extremely scary, as his ability is still Primordial Burst, where he blasts and instantly kills enemies that are a lower star level than him. Get to tier 3 and just watch him destroy. But no fear, there is a proper counter to him if you run a summoner's composition. Vagar's ultimate will focus on clones as well. Now to Kindred, who's the only returning rare to have a different ability. She's also the first rare to have three traits, making her very valuable in many different compositions. Her traits are Shadow, Inferno, and Ranger. Some of you may not know if you're not a League player, but Kindred represents two essences, which is Lamb and a Wolf. So her ability is called Wolf's Frenzy, where Wolf will rush towards Kindred's target, dealing 150, 325, 500 magical damage, while Lamb moves away from the target. Let's begin with Azir. He's a desert summoner with the ability Arise. He summons an untargetable sand soldier near a random enemy that attacks whenever Azir attacks. Although his base damage is not strong, he does have a quicker proc on his ability, and the damage on his summoned soldier adds up quickly. Keeping Azir alive as long as you can would be the best. Speaking on deserts, there's also Sivir, who is also a blade master. Although her unique is not particularly fancy, being Ricochet, where her attack simply temporarily bounces to nearby units, desert units will reduce the enemy's armor. If you find others going for a tanky composition, Sivir and Azir would be perfect choices to shred through the enemy. Moving on to one of our first tanky rare units, Dr. Mundo. Mundo is a poison and berserker with the ability Adrenaline Rush, where he spawns a toxic cloud around himself that damages adjacent enemies and heals himself for the damage dealt for several seconds. Stack the right items on him and he becomes also unkillable, constantly regening his life. Another berserker to mention is Scion. Scion is more known for his shadow synergy and has been lackluster in a berserker build. However, his ability does provide CC. Decimating Smash is where Scion smashes an area in front of him after a delay, knocking up and damaging enemies. And now time for Ezreal. I know, I know, we see your comments about how I sound just like him. Well, how about we make a goal? When the channel hits 100,000 subs, then maybe we'll throw some Ezreal voice lines in there, who knows? For now though, just learn about the new Ezreal in set 2. His trait is Glacial and Ranger with the ability Ice Shot. Ezreal fires a shard of ice towards the lowest health enemy, damaging the first enemy hit and applying on hit effects. It's nice to see his ability being able to proc a stun as well. Do you guys miss our Assassin's Champions? Because next is Nocturne and Kiana. Nocturne is also a steel unit with the ability Steel Blades. It's a passive ability where every three hits, his next attack is enhanced and he damages all adjacent enemies while healing himself. On the other hand, Kiana has the chance to be many different elementals depending on chance. Her synergy is determined by the new TFT New Elemental Hexes. Every game there's a chance for the Hex to be Cloud, Inferno, Mountain, or Ocean. This will also determine her trait. As for ability, it will be Edge of Ixtal. Kiana dashes to the side of her target and throws a blast of wind through them, damaging and stunning enemies it passes through. Moving on to one of our rare tanks is Nautilus. His trait is Ocean Warden, and his ability is Depth Charge. Nautilus sends out a Depth Charge that seeks out the furthest enemy champion, knocking them up and stunning them for a really long time. The ability may be clutch in targeting a hyper carry in the back lines. Lastly in our 3 cost units is Soraka, who is a Light and Mystic. Just having 2 Mystics is equivalent to 70 Magic Resist for all your allies, which makes her a great pickup. Her ability is Equinox. She temporarily calms an area around a random enemy, damaging enemies and preventing them from gaining mana while inside. She's the only unit in the game that prevents units from gaining mana, which can become very useful and crucial within combat. And now moving on to our epic units, the 4 cost champions. 
First, we have Annie, who's an inferno and summoner, and obviously her ability should be Tibbers. Her giant teddy bear lands into the convergence map, attacking nearby enemies. She is definitely not a bad unit, but a little underwhelming in the current patch as she's quite slow in summoning her bear. Now to Janna, one of the best supports in the game, being a mystic and a wind unit. As mentioned, two mystics grants magic resist to your entire team, while two wind will grant dodge chance to the entire team. Just by adding one unit, your entire team becomes three times harder to kill. And not just her traits, but her ability is great too. Monsoon is where Janna knocks back enemies in a large area and channels for a few seconds, continuously healing nearby allies. Almost feels like a giant redemption that also provides some CC. Next, there is Malphite, who is a Mountain and Warden. Mountain is a simple synergy to put in, as it's another one that just requires two units. He's a great tank to add in when you're running a squishy composition like Mage, especially for his ability, the Unstoppable Force. Malphite throws himself at a random enemy, knocking all enemies up in the air and throwing them. Like Cho'Gath and Sejuani in set 1, we expect him to be one of the top CC units. On to the next one is Olaf. He's a Glacial and also the best Berserker in the game. His ability is Berserker's Rage. For the rest of the combat, Olaf gains a large amount of attack speed and lifesteal for a few seconds and becomes immune to crowd control. Stack a Titanic Hydra and Bloodthirster on him and he'll just run around killing everyone by himself. The fact that he's immune to CC makes him an incredible DPS unit. Next is Twitch, who is a Poison and Ranger. The ability to spray and pray gives Twitch infinite range and his attacks become piercing bolts that fly through enemies to the end of the board. Poison feels like an underrated composition. If done right, the Poison synergy can become crucial in prolonging your enemy's abilities from ever going off. So Twitch, with his infinite range, can even reach those in the back line to slow down any OP hyper carries. And last in our new epic set is Yorick. He is a Light and a Summoner. His ability is Shepherd of Souls, where he blesses several of his lowest health allies, reviving them as a minion of light when they die. The more star levels, the more targets. Within a light composition, he's known to be the strongest unit. Now to review some returning units from set 1. We have Brand, Ash, and Kha'Zix. Let's begin with Brand since he didn't change much. He's now an Inferno and Mage, but his ability is Pyroclasm, where he launches a bouncing fireball, damaging enemies hit. On the other hand, Ash and Kha'Zix did get a new kit. Ash is now a Crystal Ranger with the ability Ranger's Focus. For the next few seconds, Ash gains attack speed and her attacks fire a flurry of arrows, dealing bonus damage. No more using her for infinite stuns. However, since she is a Crystal Champion, if you proc her synergy, she can only take a maximum of 100 damage. This makes her a great damage unit that already has a defensive measure built into her. And moving on, Kha'Zix is no longer the weak one cost unit that he once was. As an epic, he is now a desert assassin with the ability Arid Assault. He briefly becomes stealthed and untargetable, and his next attack will critically strike. Reminds us of a combination of his old kit and Rek'Sai. And finally, we have our special and expensive legendary champions. Beginning with Master Yi, our Shadow, Mystic, and Blade Master. His ability is Meditate, where he becomes untargetable and significantly heals himself over a few seconds. After channeling, his attacks temporarily deal bonus magic damage on hit. Yi is another very aggressive champion with his synergy, but also has a defensive ability to help him survive. Next is Nami. Similar to Janna, she is one of the best supports in the game. Her trait is Ocean and Mystic, providing mana gain and magic resist to the whole team. She is one of the best CC in the game with her ability Tidal Wave. It's a massive wave that goes toward a random enemy, but will knock up all that it passes through. Not only that, but it will also buff your allies that the wave passes, giving them additional magic damage on hit. Definitely a unit to pick up if you see her. Onto one of the memeiest units this set, which is Singed. He's a poison alchemist with the exact ability in League of Legends, which is his poison trail. As an alchemist, Singed runs around avoiding collisions and will leave a poison cloud behind himself constantly. Give him a bunch of tank items and just watch him slowly kill everyone off. Now to one of our favorite legendaries, it's Tarek. He's a crystal warden and a perfect tank for many compositions since his ability, Cosmic Radiance, will cause him and all nearby allies to become invulnerable for a few seconds. If you already have one crystal unit like Ash, then immediately go grab a Tarek when you see one to protect your comp. And our last 5 cost unit is Zed, who is an electric, summoner, and assassin. As the Master of Shadows, we're a little surprised that they didn't make Zed into a shadow unit. His ability is Living Lightning, where he creates an identical clone of himself behind his current target. His clone also gains his item and has the ability to clone itself too. If you haven't seen it already, the popular streamer Toast managed to summon over 20 Zeds by putting a mage cap on his Zed. Summoners with mages are always a crazy combination together in the first place, so we expect to see some sort of nerf in the future. Do you think we're done? Because there's actually a unit that's over 5 cost! 
Most of you have probably already seen her, but there is now a 7 cost unit, Lux. She has the guarantee synergy of Avatar, meaning she counts for 2 of a synergy. As for a second trait, it can be any of the following 10. Glacial, Cloud, Electric, Woodland, Ocean, Crystal, Steel, Inferno, Shadow, and Light. Sounds crazy, right? We're still unsure how we truly feel about it. Just finding a Lux in your shop doesn't mean an instant win since it highly depends on the synergy you find her. If you were running a Light comp, finding a Lux to complete it would also mean an instant win. However, finding a Glacial Lux while you run a Light composition would mean nothing. It's also very possible to 2-star because once you buy a Lux, all other Luxes that appear in shop will become that element. Finally, her ability is Final Spark, where she fires a giant laser that deals massive damage to enemies hit and restores mana based on enemies hit. And that's it for today. Are you guys excited for set 2 tomorrow? We'll be sure to analyze everything in detail so that you guys will get fresh new guides and be prepared for the new rank season. Let us know what type of guides and content that you want to see from us in set 2. As always, we really do read every single comment. Like and subscribe and we will see you all in 2 days for our brand new items guide and patch notes rundown. <laughs>